Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is me, Zombly, and I am back with episode two of the Curious Expedition, and uh, today we are checking out the opulent grasslands. Um, so, the air was fresh and tasted of salt as I arrived at the docks. There were still some preparations necessary, so I sat on the pier and waited. A gentleman approached me while I twiddled my thumbs. He challenged me to complete the expedition within 80 days and offered a reward on completion. Well, I'll take it. Ang uh, Onghas McCollum, a Scottish soldier, offered to join our expedition. Oh, hey, we could use a soldier and an extra helping hand. It looks like he has something to do with... I don't know if that's alcoholism or if he just really enjoys whiskey. But he's got some good, uh, some good combat dice there. And if we let him join us, we will get more inventory space. So, yes, I will definitely recruit... Onghas McCollum. I'll just call him McCollum, because I can't pronounce his first name. Sorry, Mr. McCollum. At last, our vessel was ready to leave the harbor, but first, I needed to purchase some equipment. I used the remaining time to visit the local outfitter before setting off. I knew that many of these items would be hard to come by in the wild. Indeed, they would. So let's barter here. Um, so here's some different items. We have fireworks. Very impressive fireworks. Can be used to draw attention away from you during your next leg in order to make uh, to move undetected through dangerous zones. That's interesting. We have an easel, a field easel essential for drawing pictures. So if we had an artist in our party, she or he could uh, draw and paint landscapes for us, which we could sell for funds or fame. That's just, that's pretty cool. We will need chocolate rations. Chocolate's expensive as heck all, though. So we'll take that. I wish I could get a machete. I can get a couple machetes. Can I get... No, I can't get a medical kit. Okay, so <laughs> we're going into a, an unknown wilderness with two chocolate bars, two machetes, some whiskey, a little bit of rope. Wow, I need more rope, actually. I'm going to spend the rest of my money on rope. Five pieces of rope, a tent, a gun, and a single shovel. We are woefully unprepared for this, but it's all the funds I had because I had to sell that last artifact for fame. So we'll go ahead and take it. I'll spend every penny I have on getting those random little bits of equipment there. I really wish I could have picked up a med kit, because those are super handy, prevent injuries and infection. So, let's see here, we've got several areas to go in either direction here, but we do have that quest active right now, complete the expedition within 80 days, so I guess we'll go right here for now, this is only 10 days through grasslands, let's go ahead and travel this direction, see what we can see. Oh, it looks like a mission. Okay, we have a mission here. We entered the mission and we were welcomed by an old missionary. He was seemingly happy to see the new faces that they had been out here for what had seemed like an eternity. We can stay overnight, we can trade with him, we can access the storage room. And this is unique to uh, the mission only in that you can store things. So if we had our inventory completely full of treasure, we could store them here and he would ship them back to culture or civilization for us. So... Not culture, that was the wrong word. Um, oh, and I meant to explain this in the last video, the compass progress. The first expedition is kind of almost like easy mode, so you know exactly where the Golden Temple is located. It will always point you to it. This isn't a normal compass in the sense that it always points north. This is sort of a Pirates of the Caribbean style compass, and it points to the Golden Pyramid. It does not point north. So as you explore and unlock more sections of the map, the compass progress goes up higher towards 100%, and it becomes more accurate to the location of the Golden Temple, so you can exit the expedition. So you have to explore in order to make this more accurate. Um, it just kind of gives you a general idea in the very beginning, and because I'm so professional, I forgot to mute my phone. My apologies. Okay, so anyways, um, let's, let's see if he's got anything to trade. Would he be uh, willing to offer us anything. We can barter with him. He does have a medical kit, but he won't really... We can give him our gun. Wow, the gun would pretty much allow us to take everything. But I really like that gun for combat. Uh, how about some whiskey? For a rope? Two ropes. I need these ropes. Okay, we can't make a deal with this guy. I'm, I'm gonna have to give up too much stuff. So let's go ahead and leave. We shook hands, and he muttered a prayer for our health. Then it was time to move onwards towards new adventures. Excellent. Well, at least he cared enough. He wouldn't help us out by giving us anything for free. Oh, hell no. But he'll pray for us. That's cool. I will take it. Need all the help I can get. So we're going to trek several days through the wilderness over here to what looks like a stone statue. Let's go ahead and examine it. 
We came across a fascinating man-made stone figure. Its cold eyes seemed to look right at us. Its presence felt uncomfortable, and we desired to move on. We saw some items by the statue. They must have been put there by people from a nearby village. They were sacrificial offerings, as it seemed. I'm going to examine it, but I might not take anything, because I do want to keep my standing a little bit high in case we do run into a village or something, because villages are where you can stay and camp to restore sanity, and since I don't have a whole lot of items that can help with that... I would like to not piss off the local population, so let's examine the loot. We took a look at the offerings, wondering if we should take something or not. Oh no, I'm going to have to be a jerk. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to take all of these because they restore sanity. Cocoa leaves and mangoes are amazing. I will let them have the blue mushroom, though. It's still going to hurt my standing, so I might as well take all. But let's go ahead and close out. Uh, we took what was offered, or we took what was useful to us. Continue. So we lost two standing with the local population, so they're starting to get angry with us. They know we're here now. They know that we are essentially just uh, destroying things now. We have no regard for their customs, and that's a little bit unfortunate. So we can go up through here, use one rope, we can click through here. This will cost us some machetes to cut through this heavy forested area, and then we can end up right here in 20 days for the cost of one rope and two machetes, so it's going to take both my machetes to get there, but let's do it, because it is an interesting area to get to. We discovered Courtney's Fast Dragonfly. That's good, that gave us some sanity back, and it looks like we discovered an old camp, but now these little plus symbols on my expedition members here show that uh, they have gained, we've gained enough region points um, so as we uh, explore more and unlock larger portions of the map, we get points for doing that, which those points can go back into our expedition members to promote them and give them further skill sets. So as much a tough warrior as a fine gentleman, what does McCollum like? He's a whiskey expert, increases the gain sanity when drinking whiskey. Okay, so that's, that's a positive. He's not an alcoholic. That's very good. Uh, but I think I will give Hormuji Norioji the promotion because he can haggle and this will increase his haggling level so we'll decrease prices when we're trading so we'll give him the promotion and too bad I can't promote Mr. Scoot our faithful donkey who carries everything for us but let's explore this old abandoned camp we entered an old campsite, the remains of an expedition that had failed long before us the few mortal remains were long rotten and overgrown by the voracious plant life ooh boy well let's, uh, let's go ahead and search the area then uh, to our surprise, one of the rotten crates still had, still held some valuable equipment. Well, let's take it. Ooh, we got extra bullets. These are nice because they are usable in combat. They will add an additional combat die. So that's really cool. We'll take all of those, and we got some empty canvas. If we ever come across an artist, we can get an easel, and that's a good way to make funds. And then everything else you collect during your expedition can be donated uh, specifically to gaining fame. So I really hope to come across an artist at some point. But we'll go ahead and take all then. So that was excellent. We're at 27 days now, and it looks like uh, Pierre Couillard is so glad that he did not get hurt. I am too. If anybody gets hurt this expedition, we're in trouble. Uh, we're almost maxed out on our, uh, on our inventory space too. We've only got one more area to store some stuff. So what direction do I want to head? We are at 53%, and it's kind of looking like it wants to head us north. It looks like there might be something aggressive in this area, so I'm going to kind of skirt around that and see what I can see in this area here. Uh, doesn't look like anything just yet, so we can spend 24 days to get atop this hill and see further. We discovered a new region. Let's climb atop this hill, and it looks like there's something that direction and a cave that we can explore if it doesn't require a torch, which I think all caves require a torch, so that's going to be sort of useless for us. So we're probably going to head northwest to this question mark. However, as you can see, we don't have enough sanity to get there, so we're going to have to take a break. We're going to chew on some cocoa leaves. Everything is so colorful, indeed. Yes, if you guys don't know, cocoa leaves is what cocaine is derived from. In of itself, they're not natural cocaine. Cocaine has to be man-made and manufactured by adding man-made chemicals. However, cocoa leaves themselves have an interesting adrenalizing effect. It also makes a wonderful revitalizing tea used to refill some sanity. So we'll chew on a couple of cocoa leaves. Uh, that'll reduce some of our tiredness. We'll also eat some mangoes, because why not? Uh, cocaine and mangoes sounds great, doesn't it? That returned 74 days to our uh, 
I guess, endurance. And it's going to take us 42. Uh, that's going to put us right towards the end. I don't think I'm going to make this in 80 days. We're already on day 37 of the second expedition here. Um, and we do have a tiger over there to deal with. They are extremely aggressive. This, uh, this might hurt us. We need to go that direction. We really do. There's just no way around it. Because I would like to explore up there. So we're going to have to cross some... Bad grasslands. Uh, it looks like we were lucky. We did discover Hermuji's tender poisonous dragonfly. Ew. I would hate to know how they discovered that. Dragonfly landed on him. Oh, hey, it's good luck. Oh, no, it's biting me in the eye. Um, but anyways, we discovered a shrine. So that was kind of worth the trek. Maybe we can get something out of it. I'm going to go ahead and move these about, if possible. Open up a little bit of inventory space. There we go. So now, if we discover anything here, that would be wonderful. A shrine towered above us. It was in terrible shape, as the weather had been beating down on it for centuries. What remained of a narrow staircase led us to the only entrance. The structure showed some long cracks, but it seemed safe enough for us to explore. We can use the rope to get into the shrine, and because we have three of them, I think I will go ahead and do it, because we'll probably discover some really nice artifacts here. We used the rope to safely heave ourselves up to the entrance and entered the shrine. Before us lay some kind of ceremonial room. It was a truly awe-inspiring sight. I held my breath as we discovered an ancient altar in its center. Let's investigate. Oh, and we got another golden vase. These do change. I know in the last video I did get a golden vase as well. The treasure will always be different. So, um, yeah. And keep in mind, this is definitely an early access. They are working on it, so it will probably improve over time. It's not yet feature complete, but it's got a lot of content and a heck of a lot of replayability, in my opinion, and I highly recommend it. It's on Steam for $14.99. The studio that made it is a German studio. I can't think of the name. It was in the opening on the last video on the bottom left, so my apologies. I should have been more professional and mentioned their name, but we went ahead and took that golden vase. Uh, I would not leave empty-handed. We took what we came for. The moment we obtained the treasure, the earth began to shake wildly. We hurried outside as the shrine was swallowed by the earth and huge mountains erupted from the ground. Oh, no. Okay. Well... I don't blame them for being extremely pissed off, but this also changed the landscape considerably. You cannot traverse these gray mountainous peaks. The only way to get around these is to use dynamite to explode them. So that is very not okay. But uh, we're kind of low on sanity. We need to somehow cross this way, and it looks like we were, were totally blocked off from this area, and I'm pretty sure this is where our temple is located, the Golden Pyramid. I'm not sure, but our compass progress is at 66%, and it seems to be hovering this way, so I'm almost certain that's the Golden Pyramid. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll just go ahead and restore a little bit of sanity. McCollum could not shake the feeling that the walls were closing in on him. Oh no, McCollum has been out here so long. After 47 days in the jungle, he's beginning to f uh, become claustrophobic. So, exploring caves would not do him well, but that's good for him because we don't actually have any torches. So we'll eat our last cocoa leaves. Noriyoji started behaving strangely. Oh no. What did he get? Paranoid. Suffers from a general distrust of others. So, my expedition members are starting to lose it. Hang in there, guys. We're, we're close to the end. We really are. Let's go ahead and take 25 days up this direction, then. We'll travel through these areas. Oh, I believe this is the Golden Pyramid. Well, how lucky we are. You know what? I'm going to take it. We're out of anything, really, other than one bottle of whiskey that can restore sanity. Oh, we do have some chocolate, though. But I'm getting really close. Okay, so this is where the game really shines, in my opinion. We have a lot to consider right now. We're running low on supply. We don't really have any areas near us that are easily accessible, so it's going to it's going to take a very long time to get there, which is going to probably fail me for that quest. I have something close by. I might have to fight a tiger to get it, but if I get there, it could be worth more treasure. Or I can cut my losses now because all my expedition members are slightly losing it, and I can just take what I found home and complete the quest. 
And considering the tiger is very close by and tigers are pretty much death incarnate walking around in the wilderness, I really don't think I can make the 33 day trek over there. We could be lucky and he could move out of the area. 33 days and 50 would put me over the time anyway, so you know what? We're going to have to go back. I'm leaving empty handed, really. There was the Golden Pyramid, overcoming all obstacles we had yet survived. We entered the pyramid, and we finished the expedition. So we were successful. Our current fame was 110. We discovered the Golden Pyramid, which adds 120, not to our fame. I don't know what it adds to. We did get 10 fame for the two butterflies we discovered, and we only took 55 days to do it. So we completed the quest and that bet from that gentleman at the docks. So our new fame is 185. And we get to pick another perk. So let's see what we can pick. We can be cartographer, which reveals full regions when locations have been found. We can be a heavy carrier to gain a two additional inventory slots. Or polyglot, allows one to rest in native villages and improves communication with indigenous people. Let's do that one. I like that perk. That's a good perk. We'll take that one. All right, so it looks like all my other fellow expeditioners have returned home a thousand times more famous than me. What's new? We need the funds, so unfortunately we're going to have to sell this golden vase. So there it is. That is Expedition 2 with me, Zombly. Thank you guys for joining me for this episode of the Curious Expedition, Expedition 2, as I mentioned. I'm, I'm redundant, what can I say? But anyways, I'm really enjoying the game. I hope you guys enjoy watching it. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. Leave me likes and comments. Uh, if you want to see more, you can always subscribe, and uh, you'll have my gratitude, because it really helps me out more than you guys know. It takes my retention numbers way up and it gets me to the front page of YouTube where it's more likely that even more people will see my stuff. So without you guys, I don't have a YouTube channel. So thanks again. I, I say it in every video, but I really do mean it lots and lots. So thanks guys so much for joining me on this episode. I will see you in the next one. Till then, bye bye <laughs>